What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're heading back to the underwater world. We're cruising all the way to the Philippines to swim with the biggest fish in the sea. Yep, you heard me correctly. The whale shark can grow up to 10 meters long. To put that into perspective, that is the size of a school bus. Whoa! This massive shark is one of three filter feeding shark species, which means it opens its jaws really wide and gulps in anything that swims through its mouth. Anything from small fish and squid to fish eggs, krill, and teeny tiny little planktonic organisms are amongst its favorite. They pose absolutely no threat to humans and are very slow swimming, so it's totally safe to swim alongside them. They prefer warm tropical waters and can be found throughout the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. Whale sharks became nationally protected by the Philippine government in 1998. However, unfortunately, illegal hunting does continue as the demand for shark fins remains consistent on the black market. controversial issue and I want to talk a little bit about why some practices are more invasive than others. I chose to book my whale shark swim tour with Dolphin and Whales Travel and Tours, a company based in Puerto Princesa, Palawan that does tours on Honda Bay. Sightings are seasonal from April to October, offshore and are never guaranteed. We just slipped in the water with it for a few minutes, nobody touched it and it continued on its way. Other companies use baiting tactics. I wasn't too keen on that. I felt more comfortable knowing that I was not having a significant impact on this animal. Unfortunately, most people are more concerned with that guaranteed photo they're gonna be able to post on social media rather than the actual welfare of the animal that they're interacting with. That kind of sucks. Don't be that person. Let's talk about Oslob. The fishermen of this small village now thrive on the success of baiting whale sharks for swarms of tourists to swim with all year round. In doing so, they have both protected the endangered sharks and found a way to lift their community out of poverty. The mass funds generated are used to manage five marine reserves, as well as create infrastructure and community programs for the local people. Now, as positive as this practice sounds, it definitely does have its fallbacks. Scientists claim harm to the animals and disruption of their migratory paths. The sharks are observed regularly bumping into the fishing canoes and conditioning them with food can actually cause them to become less wary of and or approach fishing boats that they might come into contact with along their natural migratory paths. This puts them at major risk for commercial fishing and propeller strikes. The abundance of food has also caused a number of the sharks seen in Oslob to become year round residents. This is particularly abnormal considering that they're a migratory species. Ecologists worry that taking advantage of free food and a less diverse diet than they would normally have naturally for long periods of time can cause some really negative effects, both physiologically and behaviorally. Now you might understand a little bit about why this practice remains such a controversial issue. The point it all boils down to? Ethics. Certain questions are raised. Does the feeding and human interaction have a negative impact on the sharks? Is it sustainable and what is the conservation value? Do the benefits to the community offset the degree of disturbance to these creatures? That is for you to decide. I encourage you to be a responsible traveler and do your research before participating in any animal interactions. Hopefully bringing light to the situation will put pressure on tour agencies and local authorities to regulate the industry more closely. <laughs> Thank you so much. 
much for stopping by and checking out my channel. Leave me a thumbs up on your way out and don't forget to subscribe if you're enjoying my content. We'll see you next time. Thank you.